welcome you all in this our lecture series program this is our lecture 26th and today we are going to talk about pragmatics this topic is from the content and introduction to linguistics semester 1 we are going to learn about uh, in our today's lecture what is pragmatics number 2 context there are actually two kinds of context according to george yule that is physical context and linguistic context and at the last but not the least invisible meaning so these are some of the outlines we are going to discuss in our today's topic so let's start our lecture today the, this text is taken from the study of language by george yule page 141 despite of going through some of the definitions which are unauthentic and not recommended i have uh, given here the text which is from the very recommended and authentic books the study of language by george yule so according to this book there is actually a short story uh, refers and it uh, gives us an understanding of pragmatics so let's read out this short story in the late 1960s two elderly american tourists who had been touring Scotland reported that in their travels, they had come to a Scottish town in which there was a great ruined cathedral. As they stood in the ruins, they saw a small boy and they asked him when the cathedral had been so badly damaged. He replied in the war. Their immediate interpretation in the 1960s was that he must be referring to the Second World War which had ended only 20 years earlier. But then they thought that the runes looked as if they had been in their dilapidated uh, state for much longer than that. So they asked the boy which war he meant. He replied the war with the English, which they eventually discovered had formally ended in 1745, Brown 1998. This is the shortest story I'm going to tell you in very short that in 1960s, there are two American tourists, they are visiting Scotland. And uh, while visiting, they uh, found some of the ruined uh, cathedral and asked the boy when this uh, cathedral was damaged. So the boy replied uh, in the war that the immediate uh, interpretation of the travelers uh, uh, by the world war was that it might be uh, the Second World War. But later they found that the runes are older than that. So they once again asked the boy. The boy replied that it was uh, war with the English in 1745. So you see, uh, the boy had different meaning in the World War, but the travelers, they understood something else. They uh, thought about Second World War, but actually it was uh, the war with English in 1745. So this is actually the difference um, when we are talking about pragmatics, we are talking about the interpretation or the speaker's meaning within the context or communication. Uh, here students, uh, uh, I will explain that short story hai, is short story ke andar ke American tourists are visiting Scotland and visit uh, a cathedral that is 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 a cathedral तो फिर से वो बच्चे से पूछ रहे होते हैं तो बच्चा उनको बताता है कि ये इंग्लिश वॉर जो 1745 में हुई थी उनमें ये जो है कैथेड्रल डैमेज हुआ था तो यू सी कि प्रैग्मेटिक्स इज टॉकिंग अबाउट द स्पीकर्स मीनिंग ये नहीं कि जो हम समझ रहे हैं मायने को बल्कि जो uh, बोलने वाला है वो हमें क्या समझा रहा है दिस इज ऑल अबाउट द प्रैग्मेटिक्स सो लेट्स कंटिन्यू आवर लेक्चर टुडे and again, here is the text, which is explanation of our previous text we already have learned. In the semantic uh, chapter, we focus uh, on conceptual meaning and the relationships between words. So when we were talking about uh, semantics, we were talking about the uh, meanings of the words, uh, which were the meanings from the dictionary. 
There are other aspects of meaning that depend more on context and the communicative intentions of speakers, as we talked about in our uh, previous uh, short story students. Uh, communication ke under jo hai wo speaker ki kya maine hai, uh, us maine ko jo hai wo hum, uh, pragmatics ki study kehte. In Gil Brown's story, the American tourist uh, and the Scottish boy seem to be using the word war with essentially the same basic meaning. However, the boy was using the word uh, to refer to something the tourists didn't expect. Hence the initial misunderstanding. So you see, when we were talking about uh, the previous story, it was the misunderstanding between the speaker and the hearer. So communication clearly depends uh, on not only recognizing the meaning of words in an utterance, but recognizing what a speaker mean by their utterances. The study of what speakers mean, our speaker meaning is called pragmatics. So this is all about what we are talking about and we already have talked about in our previous um, short story. This text is also taken from the book, The Study of Language by George Yule. In many ways, pragmatics is the study of invisible meaning. When we are talking about pragmatics, it is actually the invisible meaning in our communication. Sometimes words have some of the hidden meanings or how we recognize what is meant even when it isn't actually said or written. From the perspective of pragmatics, more is always being communicated than is said. Poster, heated attendant parking. Now there could have been different meanings of uh, the readers. There are lots of illustrations of uh, this pragmatic principle. Driving by a parking garage, you may see a large sign like the one in the picture. You read the sign knowing what each of the words dreams and what the sign as whole means. Alternatively, the sign may indicate a place where parking will be carried out by attendants who have been heated. So there could have been different uh, interpretations of this sign. And uh, those interpretations are having different meanings, right? So those meanings could have been invisible. But you see, when we are talking about this, uh, this poster, the words in the sign may allow these interpretations, but we would normally understand that we can park a car in this place, that it's a heated area and uh, that there will be an attendant to look after the car. So how do we in, uh, decide that the sign means this when the sign doesn't even have the word car on it? So you see students that car ka word koi nahi diya hua, magar hum jo hai isse maine yehi le rahe hote hain ki ye car uh, jo hai wo khadi karne ki jagah hai. These are some of the invisible meanings uh, in different uh, writings uh, or in different texts uh, someone is going to interpret. So this invisible meaning is also a study of pragmatics. Here we are going to talk about context. It must be the case that we use the meanings of the words, the context in which they occur. There could have been meanings in different contexts. Our interpretation of the meaning of the sign is not solely based on the words, but on what we think the writer intended to communicate. Sometimes we are reading the intentions of the writings, our intentions of the writer, what he is making communication. So words ke ilawa bhi jo hai wo hum intention bhi jo hai wo jaan sakte hain aur jaante hain ki koi jo hai jo baat kar raha hai hum se uski intention kya hai wo different context ke through jo hai wo hum jaante hain. So context jo hai wo ek khas maayne ko jaanne ke liye bhoot zaroori hai. Jaise ki aap dekhe yaan pe ek picture hai aur baby and the toddler. So you see uh, there are some of the baby's pictures on this uh, poster. So here we can't take the mind here, we can't take the mind here, and here it's also written that it's sale. So it's not that these are sale, but there could have been some of the uh, contextual meaning within that. If it's like a poster on a shop, we can know that this poster is from which reason. We will understand that this is here, जो है वो बेबी सूट्स या बेबी क्लॉथ्स जो है वो यहाँ पे बेचे जा रहे हैं। सो 
in the other picture uh, assuming things are normal and this store has not gone into the business of selling young children we can recognize uh, an advertisement for a sale of clothes for those babies and toddlers the word clothes doesn't appear in the message but we can bring that idea to our interpretation of the message as we work out what the advertiser intended us to understand we are actively involved in creating an interpretation of what we read and hear so you see yahan pe clause ka koi word nahi likha hua again we understand that this um, poster is actually an advertisement for the toddlers or children's uh, clothes so this is actually the invisible or uh, we could say here the contextual meaning and uh, from the context from that poster uh, um, which is pasted above the shop we could understand तो यहाँ पे ये जो कॉन्टेक्स्ट है कि ये किसी शॉप के ऊपर लगा हुआ है तो हम समझ जाएंगे कि ये क्लॉथ्स की शॉप है हालांकि यहाँ पे क्लॉथ्स कहीं भी जो है वो इस पोस्टर के अंदर नहीं लिखा हुआ सो दिस अंडरस्टैंडिंग इज एक्चुअली फ्रॉम द कॉन्टेक्स्ट अगेन देयर आर डिफरेंट काइंड्स ऑफ कॉन्टेक्स्ट वेन वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट फिजिकल कॉन्टेक्स्ट एंड नंबर टू लिंग्विस्टिक कॉन्टेक्स्ट फिजिकल कॉन्टेक्स्ट इन अ वेरी सिंपल वे मैं आपको यहाँ पे पहले ही समझा देता हूँ कि फिजिकल एनवायरनमेंट को देख करके हम जो है वो uh, जो है वो कॉन्टेक्चुअल मीनिंग जो है वर्ड्स की ले रहे होते हैं और लिंग्विस्टिक कॉन्टेक्स्ट जो है वो जो उसके साथ दूसरे वर्ड्स यूज होने वाले हैं उनको देख करके हम जो वो लिंग्विस्टिक कॉन्टेक्स्ट Hopefully this could have been very helpful for all of you thanks for attention thank you very much